Hey everybody, welcome back to Creating Scenery for Microsoft Flight Simulator. Many of you know by now that um, I put out a, a community request to work on a, a Air Force base together. I've had really good response and I've had people already uh, contribute models for this project. It's Wright Patterson Air Force Base here in, well, not here, I'm not in Dayton. Dayton, Ohio. I'm in Ohio, but I'm not in Dayton. It's just right down the road from us. But it is the home of the uh, 45th Airlift Wing. Plus, it is also home of the United States Air Force uh, National Air Force Museum, uh, which is huge. Uh, every plane that's ever been used in the United States Air Force is in those buildings. I have a person actually working on that portion of the scenery. Um, we have all we've been also collecting aircraft static aircraft from people and we're going to be putting putting those into the museum as well um i have a lot of great help talented artists modelers that kind of stuff and they're doing some fantastic work and when we upload this airport for free distribution uh, they will definitely be noted uh, and their contribution will be credited to them. So this is, I consider this a community, uh, a developer's community developed airport. That's, that's what we're looking at, even though it's an Air Force base. All right. So that's going to be coming up. Uh, uh, revision, uh, version one will be put up here shortly uh shortly i mean in probably a couple weeks um so we got a lot of going on uh this i'm also going to give you some updates on the channel on what to expect here in the near future um right now like i said i'm doing the ground doing the groundwork for the airport this is not google maps that you see on the screen this is the source of data for Green County, Ohio, okay, this is their geographic information site, which gives me the most up-to-date uh, data, all right, very high resolution uh, aerial photos, uh, their app doesn't allow you to go deep into the resolution, but I can easily click and download the image, and I can have images up to three inch, three inch pixel resolution. Okay. So we'll talk about some of the status. All right. So what I'm working on, like I said, I've done the uh, the primary terminal and tower. They consider this the passenger terminal. All right. Even though it's an Air Force base, uh, anybody that's contracted with the military to transport family members, service, service personnel, that kind of stuff, those activities take care, come out of the PAX term. All right. Also, so I've, I've, I've gotten the PAX term done, all right? It's in the simulator, ready to go. And I have uh, other personnel on our, in our community that are doing other portions uh, of the Air Force Base. Like I said, this is the home of the 45th uh, Airlift Wing of the United States Air Force. So they have C-17s, C-5As, or C fives, uh, not necessarily the A. The A is the old one, uh, but they have some. They have C fives. Matter of fact, this hangar right here is specifically for the C five. This this hangar is modeled, and we even have a C five parked in it. Uh, this building here is modeled along with the picnic building. <laughs> Okay, we have somebody working on the tank farm that sits over here, 
and the one of the big ones that somebody's uh, working on, it's not in Greene County, it's across the county line, but it's in Montgomery County, and that's the National United States Air Force Museum, which has every airplane ever used by the Air Force located in those buildings. Okay, it's just a whole bunch of Quonset uh, hangers, and they're, they're gigantic, they're huge. Um, B-52s, B-29s, uh, Valkyries, uh, y you name it, uh, they're in there. Every aircraft all the way up to the F-22 is housed inside that museum. I'm not really sure if they have an F-35 yet, um, but it won't be long till they have one of those in there. Um, but, uh, there is somebody currently working on those Quonset buildings. He's working on the facility of the museum. And then we have a bunch of static aircraft, uh, models that we're going to be sticking inside the museum. And as the models get built, we'll be adding them. Um, also, every airplane that's ever been used as an Air Force One is also housed there, with the exception of the VC-25A that's currently in use right now. But when the uh, VC-25 Bravo comes out in 2025, I believe, uh, the VC-25A, at least one of them, will be retired and put at this site as well. Uh, but it's, it's probably the most awesome Air Force museum I've ever been to. Okay. Matter of fact, uh, we're planning another trip down here this summer, probably. All right. Anyway, some things about what I'm doing on terms of the ground. Um, normally when I would work on the airport, it, like I said, these are three inch pixel resolution so it kind of takes them a while to catch up as I zoom in and out um, but uh, part of the ground is I have a custom material in my material library that uh, changes that default yellow line with uh, a black background like you would see in a real airport so I got all the edge lines and stuff like that the um, hold shorts okay the whole shorts have got those in. You'll notice that on one side of the airbase, you have the typical uh, runway designation at the as, at the hold shorts. Okay, but on the other side of the field, you do not. Okay, so the these red designations are only on one side of the airfield. I remember making a taxiway sign, which I'll talk about uh, in a while, but I remember I, I had a picture of a taxiway sign, and it had a 05 dash blah 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 on it, and somebody called me out on it. They said, here in the United States, we don't put a, a leading zero. Well, guess what? Not on an Air Force base. <laughs> And that's what that sign was for, was for an Air Force base. And the Air Force base has a leading zero in front of the digit. Okay, so that's what that sign was. So anyway, notice that it has a leading zero on the five right runway. Okay. Now, down here on the designation, down here on the ground, on the paint, it doesn't have the leading zero, but the sign itself does, plus the runway does, all right? Anyway, I'm taking a new approach of doing a lot of my ground textures. I am creating uh, projected meshes for those. Uh, instead of uh, creating an, uh, an image in Krita and then... Um, adding that as a material and adding a polygon in the sim, I'm using uh, projected meshes. The quality of the image is a lot better as a projected mesh. Okay, so that's what I'm doing with a lot of the ground markings. Um, the 
one thing that you'll notice is when you make an image and I did a video of this a while back a long time ago actually when I made these grounds and I put them in this polygons uh, the five in this case the five right uh, in Krita when I make the texture if I'm using a polygon uh, to place this on the ground it actually has to be a mirror image of the text all right because the way that the editor adds uh, images to a polygon all right it kind of loads them from the bottom up so that's why you kind of have to make them backwards all right well with a projected mesh you don't have to do that you just create a plane in blender and add a texture to it and then you just bring it in as any other model all right so i am doing that with ground a lot of these ground markings all right but like i said uh, you'll notice that the ground markings the hold shorts only are on one side of the airbase okay and if we come over here this is the side the side that has the red letters marking the runway hold shorts is on the side that uh, would potentially have civilian aircraft that are contracted to the military as transport and those pilots are usually not air force pilots they are commercial airline pilots that are contracted to the united states military for transporting personnel okay so civilian activity governed by the military happens on this side of the airport and so their aircraft will will get to the runways on this side okay they're they are basically forbidden to basically cross this line and get on this side of the of the airbase because this is fully military operation on this side. This is the 44, uh, the 445th airlift wing. Okay, see all the B-17s here. Okay, so in marking the ground, since civilians are going to be using this side of the air airport to access these runways, they have civilian markings on the ground all right now some of this is theory but it's it it makes sense all right but on the military side they don't need all of this stuff all right or they're not required to have this stuff um so you got faa involvement with the planning on this side of the airport or air base but it is governed all by the united states air force all right anyway i'm probably saying to more than i really need to but we have many modelers working on different parts of the airport like the tank farm uh these buildings over here uh this of the 40 the 445th all right i have a lot of the line work around the taxiways completed and after i get done with some of the ground markings today i'll actually be working on uh, the taxiway signs which will be custom made because they are military grade not commercial grade so there might be a little bit of differences in them so i need to custom make them some of them are double sided and the default in the in sim taxiway signs they only allow you to do one side so I'll be making a video, and here's an update of the channel. I'll be making a video on how to make a custom taxiway sign, all right, that lights up at night and uh, all that kind of stuff. Uh, the other thing about the channel is I've had a lot of requests lately about, okay, we've seen a lot of your older videos on making projects. Uh, can you make a project with how the sim is now after what are we uh sim update 12 now so i will be going back and creating a video on setting up a uh, uh, simple scenery and an airport you know that kind of stuff and i'll be using all the tools that are available in 
the uh, since sim update 12 okay uh, not much has changed okay uh, there's some there's some subtle differences but pretty much you can go back to my old videos and still get the idea of how this stuff is set up all right but since it's been uh, a couple years or year and a half or so since I've done those videos, I'll go ahead and update those. Uh, maybe I'll create a new uh, playlist on my channel that is post Sim Update 12. Okay, that way you know that you can get data or information about any new stuff. All right, so I will be acquiescing to those requests for updates on creating a project from start to finish now not including all the modeling and all that kind of stuff all right just the basic setups how to get an airport or simple scenery into the sim uh, i don't do sim objects i'm not smart enough to do that if you want to learn how to do sim objects and stuff like that uh, go to frederico pinati uh mamu's uh awesome at that and join his discord and all that kind of stuff uh by the way i do have a discord for scenery creators uh please join us uh if you want to uh participate in right air uh, right patterson air force base in uh, dayton ohio join the discord and join the team and pick a building or Pick an object, model it, and we'll put it in there, and your credit will be duly noted uh, as we distribute this, this airfield. Anyway, that is kind of the update for now. Um, we're going to continue doing uh, tutorials in Blender and the SDK uh, with, with no stopping, as far as I know. Okay. Um, today I'm going to finish up doing some ground, uh, ground markings and I'll probably go ahead and record those while I'm doing those and put those up separately. So, <coughs> sorry, if you haven't already, please subscribe. Uh, I'd be much appre appreciated. I know most of you don't, uh, but I would ask that you would subscribe and hit the notification bells and all that other commercial stuff. And if you feel inclined to support what I do here, buymeacoffee.com slash myphysicalworld. You guys are awesome, and I will see you guys on the next video. See you later.